Welcome to the Talk About Sexual Violence Project. Thank you for joining us to learn more about the project that's funded by the WIT Foundation and led by the ARCS National Center on Criminal Justice and Disability, the Board Resource Center, and survivor self-advocates, Keisha Weller and James Metters. The information shared in the video is a short version of an online report that can be accessed at our website at www.talkaboutsexualviolence.org. For the past seven years, this project has focused on transforming the healthcare community to better address and prevent sexual violence of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. The vision of the Talk About Sexual Violence Project is threefold. First, we want to address the epidemic of sexual violence of people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. We also want to increase the capacity of the healthcare systems to use trauma-informed support services when it comes to this issue. And we're doing this by producing the customizable website, easy to use multimedia resources, and other support materials. Keisha, I'm wondering, what does the vision mean to you? The vision means to me that we are addressing a real problem that hasn't received enough attention. We call this a silent epidemic, focusing on cross-sectional alliances means all of us come out of our silos and work together to provide patient-centered care for sexual assault survivors with IDD. In the report, you will read about different accomplishments from the Talk About Sexual Violence Project. In addition to developing online training materials, we also focused on building cross-sectional alliances among social services, healthcare, violence prevention, advocacy, and disability communities. Keisha, I'm wondering what accomplishments meant the most to you? Along with the cross-sectional alliances, we now have tools that talk about sexual violence has developed to increase awareness and provide training to health care providers and others. So in our project, we focused on three different phases. Phase one focused on women with IDD. Phase two shifted focus to men with IDD. And then in phase three, we focused on developing strategic partnerships improvements to our website, and coalition building. Keisha, I'm wondering which phase do you think made the most impact? Um, I believe phase three, because we developed partnerships. We learned we can't do this alone. It takes self-advocate survivors, social workers, universities, and media to bring the message to the general public in healthcare. Now that you have a general idea of the project, it's important to understand why it is so important that we focus on educating healthcare providers about sexual violence of people with IDD. Most people in our society today do not know how common sexual violence is among people with IDD. Even with the Me Too movement, the stories and the voices of people with disabilities have not received the same attention or sense of urgency. So let's look at the need a little closer. In 2018, NPR produced the Abused and Betrayed series that revealed a data point about how often people with intellectual disability experience sexual violence. They found that people with IDD are sexually assaulted at seven times the rate of people without disabilities. 
An organization called One in Six states that nearly one in six men experience sexual assault and or rape during their lives. The National Intimate Partner and Sexual Violence Survey found that men with disabilities were twice as likely as those without disabilities to experience sexual assault. Our project uncovered these key barriers in healthcare and in other systems. Keisha, I'm wondering, what are the biggest challenges that you see in the adult protective services system? APS and other services have not had training made available to accessible when they interview victims. In particular, trauma-informed approaches. Greater collaboration is needed between agencies that serve survivors in healthcare. As far as the healthcare system, what do you think healthcare providers should know about relating to sexual assault survivors with IDD? Healthcare providers need to be comfortable talking about sexual violence with their patients with IDD. It's been a very taboo subject. I and many others have experienced providers that have had ableistic attitudes towards us. Training is needed to begin in medical school itself. So Keisha, why do you think there aren't enough opportunities for survivors to be involved in sexual assault prevention? We're not given the chance to be involved because people think we are not capable or effective. There is a real need for more disability one-on-one training so healthcare providers can learn about our strengths and the value of including us. Just like our model, nothing about us without us. So in our report, we highlighted some different recommendations. Keisha, I'm wondering what you think with regard to the healthcare systems, why is it important that we prioritize training and person-centered care? Paying for healthcare providers is essential to transform healthcare for survivors. They need to learn how to, to relate to us as human beings. We're not objects that are going to break. I'm wondering with regard to advocacy organizations, what are other things that we can do in the advocacy world to increase collaboration overall? Engaging healthcare in advocacy organizations is an important first step. So they learn about whom we are, what priorities we have, with sexual violence happening so frequently for people with disabilities and IDD, it is essential all of us provide education on this issue. I feel it's very important mandated reporters to learn about the responsibility and report, along with that learning about supportive decision making so the survivor is part of any plan or decision that affects them. And most important of all, Learning about each person's own implicit bias will help bridge the gaps and will help us, the survivors, have more patient-centered healthcare involvement. Coalition building, collaboration, training, and self-awareness are all key ingredients. We call on every person to commit to listening, believing, supporting, and offering hope to any sexual violence survivor. 
join the movement and sign the pledge to talk about sexual violence. We appreciate your attention to this important project. Visit our website at talkaboutsexualviolence.org to sign the pledge, watch our videos, and read our final report. Thank you.